Good evening, Libby. Nice to see you again and welcome to another little video chat with Painting with Nicola, I think we would call it. Anyway, how have you got on today, my dear? Thank you. Good evening. Um, if I'm very honest, I've had a kind of good day in terms of the general work outlook, but I have not got that much painting done. Well, I can see that you have put more paint on the canvas than was yeah. there yesterday. So, first of all, tell us about what you've been doing, which is other artistic and essential stuff. Okay. Well, I think it's kind of a, an illusion that I, I get quite a lot when people say, oh, so what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm an artist living in the south of France and everyone's like oh you're living the dream and they imagine that I just kind of get up and I swan around and I can paint all day and it's just not true <laughs> uh, so uh, I have an exhibition coming up on Friday and I still haven't really told anyone so I've been spending a bit of time today marketing that on Facebook and through email and all that kind of thing um, I also had some extra work to do for the company up in Paris that I'm working with for the fashion design a little bit. So I had to do some stuff on that. Um, uh, just a moment, to... Libby. I think we'll have to tell people about the fashion design maybe in the next interview or another Okay, one. okay. But that's something I'd forgotten about that and we mustn't forget that one, must we? Okay. Yeah, I have a few little things tucked up my sleeves which we could talk about in another episode. That's a good idea. Um, I've also had to be putting together like price lists for exhibitions, which takes a surprising amount of time. And I'm trying to revamp my website a little bit at the moment. So at the moment you can only pay by PayPal and I need to put a kind of card payments on that. And then I have to set up to be a proper official merchant and doing that between two different countries is complicated. So I've been looking at the chamber of commerce in Berlin today and La 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 la. Many things. They take time. Plus, I had friends for lunch, so. <laughs> well, that can't be too bad then, can it? You've managed to <laughs> get some, nice. of, <laughs> some of the admin stuff done. But I can see that you have put some paint on. So are, are you ready to tell us a bit about that? I can do. Uh, yeah. And well, thank you very much, firstly, because I think if we weren't doing this little series of interviews, I, I would have just been lost in the office all day. So. Uh, it forced me to do some. So let me get you a little bit closer if I can. Sorry for any wobbles. Uh, so I think yesterday we just had the purple mountains. We did. And today I've been putting in some underpainting. Basically these blocked in colours are probably going to be worked over. And I, I was actually, while I was painting, I was trying to think of a way to kind of explain my process to your predominantly watercolour artists. And so in a, in a similar way, actually, there's lots of differences between watercolour and oils, but in a similar way, um, like, I, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but with a, with a watercolour painting, once it's dry, if you, if you kind of go back to it and you think, oh, this, this needs to be a little bit darker, you, you can make adjustments after it. Yes, you're quite right. Although they are quite different mediums, yes, but I do say to people that they can alter their work. And I also talk to my students about layering or washes. Ah, you know, okay. You, you can build up the colour in the same way that you are with your acrylics. So, yes. so carry on telling us about the underpainting then. Well, so it's, it's quite dark at the moment and I put a little bit of form in kind of actually my, the brushes I choose to use are actually quite hard so they can scrape the paint off as well as putting it on um, and so through that I can create a little bit of form um, but I will wait for these layers to dry now and, and go in with a glaze layer or two um, and then I can work into the shadows and that kind of thing and also the joy of oil painting is that if I want to make things lighter I can do that too so Indeed, you can. So how are you feeling about the progress so far? Or even though you've had a busy office day, so to speak, are you pleased with the way this is going? Yeah, I mean, I, I do really wish I'd had a chance to do a bit more. I was really hoping um, this, this section here is all dry. I did this a little while ago, so I was really hoping that I could get some um, foliage onto that. I don't know if you can actually see it very well, but this is actually a gold paint that I used. So when you twist it slightly, 
It's, Can you uh, bring that forward a bit more again? Try, there you go. Thank you. I'll try and twist it a little bit. Super. So it's actually, I don't know if you can see really with the light. Yes, yeah. we can. What, what did you just say? Say again, please. It's, it's gold paint. Oh! So there is a little bit of a sheen. Yes, oh, yes, so. we are catching it a little bit, yes. Okay. Um, and I want to try and retain that. So my challenge for tomorrow is to try and pull over some green foliage without losing that... Um, that brightness of the gold. In fact, I don't, I don't think it's going to be green. You know what I'm like. I think it's probably going to be a different color. <laughs> <laughs> so having, okay, so you've used a gold paint, which we, we're not quite getting, but we, we've got a feel of it. So when you're going to alter the color, you'll use a translucent glaze. Would that be right? Um, I might do that at the next stage. I might put another um, layer in here of kind of more solid paint, but probably still translucent. Super. Okay. So, well, so things are going all right then? Yeah. Generally speaking, it's going okay. Good. That's splendid. Well, I think we will all be looking forward to the next stage tomorrow, hoping that you don't have too busy an office day tomorrow and get a bit more done. But it's lovely to see a landscape coming together like that. And it also sort of brings me to the next thing we wanted to talk about, which is painting on plan air. Ah, yes. Yes, painting outdoors. Now, for some people may not know how this came about, so just a little bit of history. Um, in the good old days, when they didn't have cameras and such like, artists started sketching outdoors. And a lot of it started with the Victorians. They would go on their travels and do their sketches um, to, to remind themselves of the places they've been to and the, th the things they'd seen. And then it was the Impressionists who wanted to get closer to nature, who would go and brave the weather and get out there with their canvases and their oils and their easels and, and bash away at it. Um, now, we, we don't have to do that today because we've got cameras, we've got all sorts of wonderful technology to help us, but there are still a lot of people who do that, you and I included. In fact, we were on the same canal side <laughs> a while ago together, and, and that has actually formed um, part of a course I've recently launched about painting on plein air. So in that roundabout way, I want to ask you, Libby, is it still valid today? Do you still do it? And if so, why? Does it actually make any difference to the end result? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question, especially to ask uh, me because I'm not, uh, I, don't, I don't rely heavily on plein air. And actually that little time we spent together was a little bit out of the ordinary for me. I'd taken a week to come back down to France and, and be in the landscape. And so I think that takes us directly to what's important for me about being in the environment um, that you're, you're wanting to paint is that you absorb more than just what it looks like visually. I think if you've never been to a place and you're trying to make a painting for, from the photograph, uh, you have a lot actually. You've got all the kind of lights and darks and the values and you can create a very, very good impression of that. But I do think personally, can't prove this, um, that a painting has more impact when it's got a little bit of your emotion, your soul in it. Um, and I know that the landscapes that I've mostly focused on painting myself, this is actually not a good example of that because this is a photograph that somebody else took. This is a landscape I've never seen. So I'm actually struggling with this at the moment. Um, but I, yeah, when I came back to the canal to, to come and have those days painting with you, um, I, re I was missing it. It's kind of, it's like my favorite place. And uh, I'd been in Berlin for a long time and I just needed to touch base again. So I worked there solidly for a couple of years and yeah, I, I felt like I was losing touch a little bit. So yes, I think, I think what, what painting in plein air gives you is that real contact with nature, which rests in you, the smells and, and the noises and the things that you can't capture on a photograph and they will all go into the painting eventually. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. And in fact, um, it's, it's given me some insights, some things I hadn't really thought out, preparing the course. 
putting it together and spending the time with you. And this also really comes back to a bit to what we were saying about last night about overthinking and planning. When you're out there, you're at, you're in the, you're in the thick of it. You're in the trenches almost. You know, you've got people buzzing around you. You've got light changing. You've got cars parking in front of what you're painting or whatever it is. And I think it it brings about a spontaneity and a vibrance. Mm -hmm. And it also you've got to make decisions quick. You can't overthink. And I think that is a is a valid part of of going out and doing that work. I I, I think that's very true. I agree with you. Would you would you say that? Yes, yeah, I would agree with that, definitely. Um, I actually, uh, perhaps it's a bit of a comfort blanket, but I do like taking the works that I've done, whether it's sketches or full paintings, in nature, and then I'll, I'll bring them back to the studio. So I actually have four with me here that I did when we were together. Um, but I've tinkered with them since out, you know, since being out in nature. And I know there are purists out there that say that's a terrible thing to do. And if it's plein air, it should be fully plein air. But my work has never been about the place, actually, uh, strangely enough. I, realizing that I was a landscape painter came as a bit of a surprise to me because it's really, <laughs> yeah, I never set out to do that. I, I, it's not really about that for me. It's about color and paint. Um, so, so yeah, it was kind of, um, I suppose what I'm trying to say is that the, the, spon the, the, the emotion for me is the important thing. Um, and so I do need to go into nature and capture that feeling and be inspired by the place and, and all the energy and the peace that being in nature gives to you. However, um, then I'll come back to the studio and I want to make a painting that I'm still kind of proud of somehow. And, and perhaps it's shyness, perhaps um, in the future I'll have more confidence to show people my kind of looser, outside, sketchy kind of work. But at the moment it is pretty sketchy, so <laughs> I well, still like to turn that into a Yeah, uh, and you, you've just said the word I was just going to pick up on, actually, with my next comment, was confidence. I think if you can get yourself out there and not be bothered if anybody's watching you or looking at what you're doing, it builds your confidence in here. And I think that can only be beneficial to your overall creative work. Yes. Um, I had, I, well, I did a little video recently on YouTube about careful of the language you use. I had one lady who was going to paint plein air with me and she said she was, oh, I was scared about doing this. Well, that's too strong a word, you know, you've got, but it's, it's a confidence builder doing this. I really mm. do believe it is. It's true. While we're talking about nature and the benefits of nature, can I add one little plug? Of course. I've been reading an amazing book and I really want to share it with everybody in the whole world. So I'm going to share it with your audience. Right. Um, I paint a lot of trees, but the, the painting that we're looking at at the moment is of vineyards, which are kind of like mini trees, it kind of counts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I mostly paint trees and I've just discovered this amazing book. It's about forest bathing. Oh! And it's a Japanese doctor who's basically been putting the scientific research behind why it's so good for you to go for a walk in a forest. I mean, we all know that it's, it's good for you to go for a walk in nature. And this book is a very beautiful book, lots of beautiful pictures. And uh, it's, it's basically, it's been really inspiring for me because a lot of people say to me about my work that, like, oh, Olivia, I love your work. It's so full of peace and it's, you know, calming and it's tra tranquil in French, tranquil and, uh, I, I'm kind of cheating really because I'm painting nature <laughs> and it's the nature that does that um, and I think yeah so I would recommend I would promote your plein air painting course and recommend that people do spend more time in nature and painting in nature is a great way of being there because you're occupied it's, it's great if you're the, if you can be in a forest or out in nature for a couple of hours to really feel the benefits of everything that it gives us. 
Okay, yes, I think you're absolutely right. And um, I will put the details of that book in the description below the video if you send that to me, Libby. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the, the, we have to do this plan air stuff occasionally. Okay, we all like to nip back home, put the kettle on or whatever it might be, get comfy and carry on painting. That's the bit we want to do. But it's like most things, you've got to do you've got to do the graft, you've got to do the fundamentals and it's all, it, it, it builds not just your, your confidence, your character, but your painting skills as well. Painting outside, it, it improves that very much. So I think that's been, a, that's been a very nice chat this evening, Libby. Good, yeah, for me too. Do you have anything else that you want to add just for this evening? Because I see we're sort of coming to the end of the time. No, that's fine, I've already plugged Plug the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's super. Well, it's been really lovely chatting with you again and to see the progress in spite of your busy office day. Mm -hmm. And we will be chatting again tomorrow night and we're going to see how your progress is going. But we're also going to talk about something that is quite um, a thorny subject with some artists about merchandise. Mm. Mm. So, with that, I will say good night, Libby. And good night, Nicola. Thank you. Okay, and we'll talk again tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Bye.